Prescott Valley. And welcome to the uh, regular meeting of the Parks and Recreation Commission. Uh, call the meeting to order and have a roll call, Kathy. Okay, Vice Chairperson Pierce. Present. Commissioner Gummer. Yes. Commissioner Byron. Present. Commissioner Gorman. Here. Commissioner Moss. Here. And Commissioner Cabato. Here. Thank you. Looking at our agenda, is there any changes to the agenda tonight? Hearing none, I would call for a motion to approve the agenda. I motion that we approve the agenda from October 13, 2020. Second. Second. Go ahead. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Scheduled announcements. Oh, approval of the minutes from October 13th, 2020. Yes, Should have those in front of you, Kathy, had those. Yes. Any uh, changes or additions to the minutes from October 13th? Hearing none, I would uh, entertain a motion to approve the minutes. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes for the October 13th meeting. Favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. All right. All right. Schedule announcements. Mr. Chair, if I could for a minute. I, uh, we have a new commissioner that we haven't formally introduced, and I think we should give him an opportunity to introduce himself, give us a little background on himself. Absolutely. If you want to take it away, Gary. Uh, well, thank you, Buzz. I'm Gary Cabato. I came from Honolulu, Hawaii. I just moved into Prescott Valley about a year ago. I worked in parks for 27 years in the county of Honolulu and finally retired in 2016 after four years as a parks director. Welcome. Aloha. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think there might be a, a study session we need to do in Honolulu to <laughs> learn about the parks there. Our retreat, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Thank you. Welcome, Jerry. All right. Uh, commission report or programs, classes, and special events. Bobby? Yes, sir. Good evening, commissioners and Prescott Valley. Uh, I have a few things that I wanted to just give you an update on. Um, with our 2020-2021 winter volleyball season coming up, uh, remember that registration opens on November 16th. Uh, we will be playing at the Boys and Girls Club gym uh, this year, so we're excited to use that facility. Uh, $150 per team, and it will be uh, ages 15 and up. Bobby, if I could for a minute. Please, sir. Online, um, it said November 9th. Okay. They're starting signups, but it is the 16th. It is the 16th, yes, sir. So that would be a clerical error. We'll get that fixed tomorrow. Well, Perfect. Thursday. <laughs> That's right. Uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, with our uh, athletics update, um, we talked about it, but I wanted to hit it again. We had a really good year for tournaments and softball. Um, so all of our uh, Monday and Friday nights are concluded, 38 teams, 228 participants, and an average of 75 spectators. Uh, our tournaments hosted this year was two youth fast pitch uh, tournaments of 32 teams each, and then one youth soccer tournament with 300 players. And then uh, corn toss tournament, uh, the one that happened on the 19th, uh, we had 32 participants, 50 spectators, and then the next tournament coming up is going to be on the 12th of December. Um, we have art workshops coming up. Uh, with uh, a few different ones that you can actually take. So you'll either be doing three days or two days, uh, daytime or evening, and an acrylic painting workshop uh, priced at $60 for the day, that's three days. Uh, the evening one is gonna be two days per week, and that's $40, and then the acrylic painting will be three days at $90. Uh, total Jump 360 uh, Jump Rope class, uh, Saturdays from 8.30 to 9.30 at the Boys and Girls Club. That's a 10 plus class and it'll be $30 per month. 
um, that that one seeming like a lot of fun. So make sure that you guys go check that out. Uh, yoga, Qigong, and Tai Chi. That's Wednesdays, 8.30 to 9.30. Um, out on the outdoor stage, and that's $6 per class. Uh, Drop-in fee. Um, that's all for the updates. Um, if you guys have any questions, I would love to answer them at this time. I think that we've just done a spectacular job again this year with your tournaments you've had, with the people coming to town, bringing their money for us. Uh, just keep up the great work. Will do, awesome. absolutely. Shelly's done a great job out there. We're very fortunate to have her. And you know, when you mention that, we have not met a lot of some of the employees, and we were thinking maybe one employee, um, a meeting, could maybe come introduce themselves, tell us what they do. Absolutely. Perfect. And Jack-O-Lantern Town, do you have a report on that? Yes, sir. So we had Jack-O-Lantern Town that was hosted on Friday, October the 30th, uh, 5 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. here at the Civic Center campus uh, at the Circle Amp, well, Theater on the Green. Uh, there was movies, music, photo booths, line dances, characters, all kinds of fun out there. And we had around 13 to 1,500 people. So oh. it was a very well-attended event. Uh, everybody had a great time. Uh, Mia, who's been interning with us, she was actually the lead on that event, and she did an awesome job. I can't give her enough kudos for it. Uh, Isabella, as well as Bryce, were out there helping her out and backing her up. So we had a really good time, and we hope everybody in the community did as well. Great. All right. I do not have a chairperson's report this evening. Uh, I don't have a tree advisory either. Is there any updates on the tree advisory buzz? Uh, I think we have to get things submitted by December. I believe Nick is working on stuff for us. You know, these guys always come through for us. Makes us look good, but they do the work. But we've had that program going on, what, 15 years? Yes, sir. And, and it's been a wonderful program for us to have events in Arbor Day and trees that we get grants and, and get them planted. And we can always use trees. And just to definitely let you guys know, we are working on that. Nick is already in the process on that application, so it will be submitted, and we will get tree, hopefully get Tree City USA again this year. All right. All right. Old business. We did have a good uh, commission park tour on Sunday. I thank you for that, Bob. That was excellent. Absolutely. Thank you guys so much for coming out. I know it was a little chilly out there, but I feel that that's a, a great way for us to get the commissioners out, be able to take a look at what we're doing and see it rather than just hearing me drone on about it in here. Yeah, I learned a lot of just in being there and listening to the comments. They were excellent. Very good. So how many do we have left to tour out of the two? We had two. <laughs> we got quite a few after that. If you guys have a number of other Sundays, we might be able to hit them all. <laughs> well, not, not too many right now. Maybe not in the winter. Holidays, <laughs> <right>. <laughs> <clears throat> all right. Spray pad conceptual drawings. New spray pad. For yes, sir. So with uh, with the spray pad, um, like we've been talking about, going in at uh, at Bob Edwards Park. Um, from the slide, you can see right there uh, the proposed spray pad location, uh, kind of over in the uh, west west corner of the park. Um, kind of by the Ramada. Um, from that, we do have some conceptuals for the commissioners to be able to look at, and then I also put in some actual mechanical drawings so that you can see how the spray features will work. Uh, one of the first ones with this conceptual, uh, it's an aquatic spray pad and it's by a company called Extra Play. Um, it, it's actually a really, a really in-depth, pretty cool spray pad. Uh, as you can see, it's a, it's a pretty good layout. You see we have the vertical features for ADA and then a number of the embedded uh, spray features as well. Um, with that type of a drawing, I wanted you all to also see this. Um, with that spray pad, it's only a 2,200 square foot pad, 25 individual spray features. Uh, you have a five foot safety apron, which is industry standard on that. Uh, we're doing it broom finished concrete, and then another industry standard, which is a one year warranty, but it also goes up and down, if you will. Um, so. 
one year pretty much bumper to bumper and then it goes to a three year on some parts, five year on some parts, 10 year on some parts, and then 25 year on very small parts. So uh, it, it is a really nice spray, uh, spray pad, but I will be asking them to get us uh, another number to take it up to 2,500 square feet. Um, going into the next spray pad, the conceptual layout of this one is pretty much the same as the other. As you can see, we have the vertical spray features for ADA, as well as a number of other in-ground spray features. So it's very usable, user-friendly. Everybody can have a good time on it, no matter which part of the spray pad you'd be on. And from this mechanical drawing, um, you can see the layouts of every different feature and how they actually kind of spray out. Obviously, you know, even if it's coming out of the ground, the water's got to come back down in an umbrella format. So this one is the 2,500 square foot pad. We have five additional spray features to give us 30 total. Uh, five foot safety apron, still broom finished pad, and the industry standard five year or one year warranty. So between both of those spray pads, I, I wanted to bring them to you for any questions or observations, anything like that, before we got down to uh, selecting who we'd like to go with. The uh, broom finish pad, is that the same thing we have at Mountain Valley? Kind so, of soft and it's they don't slip? The well. broom finished isn't, so that will be a, it'll feel like the bottom of the pool. Um, in the zero entryway. So instead of doing the pebble tech, um, which we really don't have in the budget, to be honest with you, uh, the broom finished is what most people who have a, a spray pad that is not gonna be inside of a facility and constantly supervised, they use that because with the broom finished, it, it helps out with some of the slipping issues, but it still feels nice on your feet. It'll still, it'll still be a great spray pad even without the pebble tech. And I suppose most kids will probably wear water shoes anyway. Yes, absolutely. I would recommend it. Sure. So I think we talked about when we were on our tour also that some of the kids don't like the big bucket dump and things. And I see what we've got here is just all fun spray and they can run underneath and not get drenched. And exactly. Soaked. And because we've seen some of those bucket features where the kids aren't, aren't ready, all of a sudden like, hey. You get a two-year-old out there and <laughs> yeah. it's still filling yeah. and then yeah. right time, wrong place, even though it's fun, it's still scary. So Or mom and dad, exactly. unexpected too. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Very good. I think, I think you've, you've hit them all, Bobby, with as far as what we were looking at and what we talked about. Perfect. Yes, sir. We So yeah, absolutely. With, with the recirculation system, it will have a research system on the spray pad, um, but we will be. Uh, sending it to a surge tank that they will then be feeding the irrigation with. So when the water comes in, it's gonna be potable water straight from the main line, and then once it hits a person or just the spray pad and then drains into the surge tank, it'll be feeding irrigation. So then we're basically, we're not reclaiming water, but we're making sure it goes to a good use. You're welcome, sir. So it's clean water every day? Every single day, absolutely. So it'll be town water, same thing you bathe in, same thing that you're gonna drink, you're drinking water. So it'll be up to the industry standards at all times. Good, good to know. Bob, have you uh, had a chance on these two designs, do they have any history of maintenance and, you know, as to whether one is less costly to maintain than the other, that type of thing? Gotcha. So with, with the cost associated to a spray pad, um, no matter which company you go with, uh, you're going to have pretty much the same cost associated to it. Um, with your in-ground, with us going with mostly in-ground spray features, that kind of helps us out with some of our costs. The same thing is to be said with the broom finished pad rather than doing the pebble tech. Um, the Pebble Tech upkeep, as well as its life cycle replacement costs, that's very expensive to take care of. Um, but both of these having only three to four vertical features, uh, those those will be mostly what we'll have to maintain um, due to just the finishes and if you know anything happens to one of those. But everything else is pretty low cost. 
Uh, Bob, do you, uh, do the companies maintain it or do you have to have special training for, uh, for our employees to maintain it? Oh, so to once, repair it? Yeah, absolutely. That's a great question. Um, once we assume, or once we take it over after it's been completed, we're done with the punch list and we've signed off that it's ours, we have to take care of the maintenance from there. Um, I, I'm actually a certified aquatic facility operator, so I've been through the splash pad portion of this. And then Marissa, who actually does aquatics, she's certified to take care of these kind of things. Mm -hmm. And then uh, bringing on Adam, he's going to get that certification as well so we'll all be able to maintain this thing as needed but Adam will predominantly be taking care of this and then the the rest of our maintenance staff will be trained in the proper procedure to either fix it clean it or just generally take care of it so you know it's not something too complicated that it, your staff's going to be able to take care of it. Yes, ma'am, absolutely. Um, the vertical features are usually the ones that I worry the most about. The ones that are just embedded in the concrete are more of a nozzle. They give it a, a fun spray effect. Mm -hmm. And then with the vertical ones, that's the ones I've only, they're the only ones I've had an issue with in the past. Okay. And then we did speak, Bobby, about, was that our spray pad, as a matter of fact? <laughs> <laughs> we, <laughs> it was a little smaller than what we were looking that's, at. That's but. the little one we were going to do. <laughs> okay. So uh, we also spoke about we'd probably have to do a safety barrier. Yes, sir. Along, because the parking lot is where we're kind of going adjacent to, and we would have to probably create some kind of a barrier and that's also included in yes sir so with that it won't be included with the company that we're going with however with the funding source that we have currently we'll be incorporating that cost into the monies that we're using so uh, what we're looking at doing is uh, the same ornamental iron uh, that is up on the north side of the park that's kind of cordoning off, cordoning off the uh, playground um, that'll be going we'll be looking at around 70 to 100 feet so then it'll have a gate in the middle you can still get to it um, and then I had Nick out there looking at how we can get some connecting pathways so we'll put some concrete pathways so you don't have to walk through the grass or if you're utilizing the Ramada we'd like to pull some concrete sidewalk off of there as well so we'll be connecting it right I, I see here it's this is round or octagonal and the uh, uh, specs are are uh, rectangle yeah where are you seeing the octagon K well, it says uh, proposed space, well, it's gone now, right there. It says proposed spray pad location. God, okay, so the octagon right there, that's it? actually the Ramada. Ramada. And then okay. the, the white proposed spray location, that's exactly where we're looking uh, to okay. place the rectangle spray now. pad. Okay. Good qu no, good question. Thank you. Not an architect. So. <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> No, I think it was great being able to look at that Sunday also and listen to yeah. the proposal. And I think like we talked about with the neighboring housing going in and working with that neighbor there as to what they're going to put up and the access and also safety, I think you're going to have a, a good operation there. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you, sir. And the adjacentness to the well, future YMCA possibly. Mm -hmm. So that would be, awesome. be a great spot to have a partnership with them at. Great. All right. All right. Moving on to new business. Scholarship system donations. All right. And with uh, with this portion of uh, of the meeting, I'm going to call up Miss Casey Van Heron, our director, and she is going to take it from there. Great. Thank you. Good evening, commissioners. Um, one thing that uh, um, I've been in this position for two months. So coming over from the library side, we do everything's free. That's what we do there. Uh, lately, back in April, I proposed to do away with fines for library materials because it was a barrier to service, to offer service for those people who couldn't afford to go to the library. They may get books, they have overdue fines, and then they can't use the library anymore. So council was very gracious in accepting um, a, my proposal to do away with overdue fines. That was great. Um, and one thing, and especially with Jason, uh, talking to him and Bryce, um, they wanted to do a scholarship fund for kids who may be unable to 
go swimming, participate in dance classes and other, other programs through Parks and Recreation, and we believe that this service should be available to everybody. Um, but granted, on the park side, we have to pay. There has to be some sort of cost recovery. So what we came up with, um, and a lot of uh, organizations do this, is a donation button on our site to where anybody, hey, you want to sign up for this class? Great, also, do you want to donate to our scholarship fund? So um, I talked to Katie, who's in finance, and she set up an account that when someone does donate, that money will go into the account. So it's going to be a slow process right now. Um, we have some guidelines. There's uh, a lot to consider with, you know, how are we going to choose, pick and choose who gets free, free, free swim lessons or free dance lessons. Um, and we're, we're still trying to work out the, the glitches here, but uh, Jason and Bryce came up with a good plan that students still have to pay a minimum of $5 for each program. However, Parks and Rec, through the scholarship program, will pick up the $100 coverage child per fiscal year. So a maximum of $100 for a program for a child. Um, we can offer 25, 50, 75, and 100% coverage. So depending on their uh, financial status, uh, we can maybe pay 25, 50%, 75, or 100. Um, scholarships only cover the cost of registration. Students will have to need, uh, if they need to purchase shoes or supplies or things like that, they still have to pay for that. Um, scholarship must be used between July 1st, June 30th, and uh, scholarship recipients must register for classes in person over the phone. So when they register, you have to immediately pay through the phone or in person. We know they're in the scholarship program, and we can take care of those fees. So we're still working out some stuff, but Bryce, uh, there's a little glitch, too, with uh, the service that we use. Um, is it Civic Center? What is it? Rec 1? Rec 1, um, there's a little glitch with the funds right now, so she has a call in to uh, I, their IT uh, to help with that. But we're excited to get this off the ground. We think this is a great opportunity. Um, how many people, what was the 50% of people? Over 50% of students are on free lunches in HUSD, and that's what we were really trying to base that on. And that's a lot of kids. Um, we don't know how much money we can collect. We got $5 the other day, so we're really excited about that. Um, so I think once we start advertising and putting it out there, we will get a lot more uh, people donating to this fund. I think it's a really good um, opportunity for our community to really help those kids who deserve to have free swim lessons or need dance classes or just that interaction. So. Um, I, I think this is a great program, and I'm excited to get it off the ground. Any questions? I, I really believe you're right, that once we get the word out and people know how what this is going to be for, I think we'll just have... I think so. I think your businesses and everybody in the town is going to step in and help. Absolutely. Fingers crossed. Very good. What kind of advertisement are you doing for businesses to uh, donate? Um, you know, and that's something we really have to work out. I, I really want to work on our marketing a little more. Um, uh, we have on, on other ends in the town, we have some really great social media people. The library has great social media, but I think picking up the game on that side, we really have to come up with a better plan to market what we have. Yeah, I think if you do, I think the businesses will really uh, uh, will come together and uh, support the programs. Absolutely, I agree. And you have friends of the parks and things. Yes, which Laura, uh, Council Member Hunt is over right now, and she's trying to regroup that group right now. Very good. Anything else? All right. Thank you. Thank you. This is the best one. Land conveyance. So with the land conveyance, um, since we were all able to go out there on our parks tour, take a look at Santa Fe, and then also go to Granville Park to take a look at just a 
section of uh, the lands that we had taken over there as well. Uh, wanted to make sure I had updated you guys, make sure the community who's watching this at home can take a look at it as well. Um, from the map you can see right here on the right hand side of the slide, uh, the conveyance land down by Granville, that's a 17 acre track and it's an existing multi-use path slash trail that is unmaintained. So. That's a new one. And then at Granville, uh, or I'm sorry, at Santa Fe Park, we have basically taken over the uh, recently finished park and the undeveloped land that goes all the way up to Granville Fairway. Um, from that, I wanted to show you a little bit of what we're looking at on that trail. So even though we only saw where what was behind the park when we went out on our tour. As you can tell, it's a pretty substantial piece of land. Um, with, the, with the trail behind it, uh, it is utilized like we had also saw on Sunday. We had a, a couple that was out there utilizing it that day, even though it was cold, still enjoying it. So it, it's, a, it's a piece of property that has potential and promise. And uh, seeing it from this view, you can grasp a little more how long that trail actually is. Did you have any other questions uh, pertaining to the trail after seeing it there on Sunday or seeing it on a slide now? Uh, we talked about that piece of that was kind of fenced off a little bit. You said the Army Corps or something. Did you ever get information on that? What? So we haven't got information back on what exactly that is or if we have any other possibilities for in there. Um, there is a lot of drainage within that spot. So after we get some of those questions answered, uh, we'll be able to take a little more action, get a little better plan, and get the commissioners involved with some of our other planning process for that piece of land. And that's not part of the, this give? Yes, yes sir. It is part of it? Yes it is. So we, we would probably end up maintaining a lot of that. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So we'll, we'll definitely get it narrowed down um, in the coming weeks, obviously, with us just taking it over. We have a little more digging to do to figure out exactly you know, where our barriers are. And then after that, like I said, we'll make sure we get it in here to you guys and let you know what our plan is, get your response, feedback, and things like that, so then we can make that what it needs to be. You know, I think initially when we first went out and looked at it, we all thought, what the heck is, you know, what are we going to do here? And, but we, when we started speaking about it, it was like, you know, what a great thing if we can get this trail cleaned up and actually in your master plan for parks, people wanted more trails. Mm -hmm. If we could connect maybe across the, under the road or something and connect more trails and get us to the Iron King and get us to the Glassford Hill Trail, and I mean, it would be awesome for this town to have a whole trail system like that. Yes, sir. Not only the, for walking, but bikes, everything. Mm -hmm, absolutely. And it's flat, so uh, anybody can uh, partake of it. Yep, absolutely. Without problems. Yep, it's no no incline. If there is, it's just little gradual washouts yeah. currently, but sure. anybody can use that, enjoy Granville Park first, or take their laps around and then finish up at Granville Park and enjoy that as well. I think it is going to be good, and I think, Bob, that we need to look ahead. The way development is happening over there, uh, I want to see if we can look at how some of these may connect, because I agree with Brett and Buzz, you know, that connecting those trails that will be more and more important as time goes on and development continues. Uh, the, the Peabine Trail is such a great trail, mm -hmm. and okay. uh, where we used to have a, an access right on Glassford Hill there, uh, now we need to look at how all these might connect up and people can have portions to walk all through there. Mm -hmm. and, and the connectivity, just like we've been talking about with our master plan, that's something the community really wants. And like I said, this, this new piece of land has a lot of promise. So making sure that we may get the connectivity and in the future planning in there as well, that'll be, a, that'll be a big portion of this. And if I'm right, by looking into my crystal ball, the end of Glassford Hill will probably take us to Chino Valley one day. And we could tie trails along with that also, right all mm -hmm. into that. That'd be awesome. Multi-use options, absolutely. That'd be great. All right, and then if there's no other questions uh, pertaining to this portion, then we'll move on to Santa Fe. Um, <clears throat> I know that you can't see it too well with Santa Fe Park, um, but 
the outlined blue area, uh, since I didn't have an aerial photo of the finished up uh, Grand or Santa Fe Park, um, it's a pretty pretty big piece of land. That's going to be 32 acres. Um, and with the Santa Fe Park that's already in there, um, on the right-hand side of your slide, that's showing you a little more of what was proposed for this park. Um, we do have the two walking bridges and then also the path that goes over there to the uh, to the back side of the park, and uh, that's that's something that we'll have to get back in there, maybe a phase two portion of the project. Um, but with the, the park being completed and having that usable space already, that gives us a, a really good foothold to start making additional plans for the rest of this land, which, as I had said, it's, it's quite a bit. 32 acres is a big plot. Yeah. And I think we did talk about the greenway space, and again, back to our master plan, people were looking at picnicking areas where they could just take the family. We talked about more ramadas for sports teams that would maybe be able to get under a shade that day. And, and there is, there's, there's great potential for the land here. And I know we spoke about the walkways and all the things and, and you know, like, but like I said, the, it's all future budget. Exactly. All right. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, guys. I see here an item that, uh, I don't know who proposed a commission meeting time change. I, I thank you, whoever did it. <laughs> I was looking at UK, it sounded like <laughs> something. <laughs> uh, discussion on that. Uh, we know what the uh, proposal so basically with the proposal, I was just putting it in, um, taking it to 5.30 when people are more predominantly getting off of work, maybe we'll get a few more people to attend the meeting and then also um, make it a little bit easier on the commissioners, get in here at 5.30, we will take care of business, we'll make sure the community is informed, and then uh, we'll be out of here at 6.30 rather than starting there. So wanted to get that proposed and see what the commissioners had to say about it, see if that might work for you guys. Um, and and get a little feedback, see if we might want to change. Absolutely love the idea. Yeah, I, I don't really know if any of us have work or anything that would interfere with a 5.30 time. Um, for myself, retired, I think the majority of us are. Some of you guys might have trouble getting here if you're off work at 5 and you're working in Prescott's when you get here at 5.30. Uh, but overall, if it works for everybody else, I think it's a wonderful idea to get us here earlier if we can all work it out. I know that Scott, you work, and Zach, you're still working. Do you guys foresee trouble? I look at this as my full-time job, and the uh, stuff I do 40, <laughs> 40 hours a week is just, you know, extra. Plus, plus the paycheck we get from here. Who needs, matter, who needs to know, work? I'm, I'm here, so 5.30 will work no matter what. Perfect, Scott. It could be 4.30 and I'd do it. Fine. <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, and with Brett, of course, with, I think, I don't think he would have a problem. You know, sometimes his job's going to conflict, but other times it won't. So we have a great vice chair, and I think that's all we need to worry about. Well, I definitely want to check with Brett to, to make sure, because I haven't heard, you know, this first time I've seen this on yeah. but... Absolutely. Certainly good for me. I don't have any problem at all. Yeah. In, in speaking with Brett when we were going over the agenda and preparing for the meeting, he didn't ring, bring up any concerns, but absolutely right. speak with him first, and then uh, we, we could definitely move it to 530 if that works for everyone. No problem here. And, you know, we don't meet in December, so maybe if we could come up with a, a proposal tonight... We, and I think Brett would be able to work it out for us. We, we could just start in January, the first of the year, coming at 530. We would need a motion. So what I'm hearing you say, Buzz, man of many years of experience, is that we would need a motion I, to we do would, this. I think if we all we could all agree tonight, I think we could get a motion going and, and we could get that worked out and then come January we could start coming at 530 in the evening instead of and then of course as it gets later in the year the winter it gets darker faster for us we could maybe get out of here as it starts getting dark right so I mean if, if there's no objections to anybody tonight and I'm pretty sure Brett would be able to work it out for us I could go ahead and make the motion if you'd accept 
Okay. All right. I'd like to make a motion to change the commission meeting time from 6.30 p.m. on Tuesday, the second Tuesday of the month, to 5.30 p.m. I second that motion <laughs> to change that time. In favor? Aye. 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 <clears throat> Every other meeting and be in Honolulu. Okay. That's right. <laughs> I could be in for that. <laughs> <laughs> That's another future budget we need now. I'm sure Parks and Rec has some pocket money somewhere for us. <laughs> got away from the whole world, taking them back there. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you, guys. All right. All right. We uh, Any un unscheduled public appearances? I do not see anyone... Mm -mm. here tonight so I believe that uh, is taken care of our next meeting is still at 6 30 p.m. currently no we just changed it didn't we we'll get it changed so we'll change it to 5 30 p.m. Tuesday January 20th and before we adjourn Mr. Chair I'd like to just kind of give a heads up to Kathy that we appreciate the timely agenda items we're getting and things we're yes. getting so we're all a little educated before we walk yes, in thank the you car. very much so thanks kathy and the great job you do and keep it up i second that <laughs> <laughs> yeah it does seem to be going well too all the feedback i've been getting on the transition to the new organization has been positive and um i think it's going to be great for the town i mean i, I think it as i mentioned to Bob the other day, I, it broadens our scope of who we can talk Absolutely. with and deal with. And, yeah, uh, and it's great to hear that too. With a great group of people, just like uh, you guys complimenting Kathy, who does an amazing job in there, it's great to have amazing staff because they're the ones who do a lot of the work as well. So having them on board with us, we can do anything. I Most think, things. I think it would be kind of fun if we could all maybe meet staff or yeah. maybe maybe yeah. half of them. We can absolutely meeting. make that think, happen. You know, We'd love to so bring them So we can kind of put a face to the name and, yeah. and find out what they're doing. And that'd absolutely. be great. We'll do. We'll make that happen. All right. Do I need a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn. I second that. All right. In favor, aye. 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 We are adjourned. Thank you, Prescott Valley.